Hey there. You won't believe what we're about to do. Oh yes, we're going to discuss Millard Fillmore. It's like, who discusses Millard Fillmore? Like, ever. And it's Fillmore what? Well, got this on uh, Facebook. It was a link. Posted story article. They decided that since it was the anniversary of Miller Fillmore's death, they were going to post an article called 10 Things You Should Know About Miller Fillmore. And I'm like, what? Yeah, I'm sitting here contemplating making a video about Abraham Lincoln or something, and they throw Miller Fillmore out there. And it just kind of struck me. So I was like, huh, cool. And I clicked on it. This here. Notice how my uh, lovely printer. Likes to put all these little styles around things. It's nice. Hmm. At least I can still read at this time. Okay, so there are like 10 things you should know about Millard Fillmore, you know, because he's the butt of uh, innumerable jokes, you know. They just, uh, so maybe it's Fillmore butt. I don't know. He'll always laugh about his lack of accomplishments and his unusual name. So I'm like, uh, Millard Fillmore. All right, I'm going to make a video called, Was Millard Fillmore a Complete Loser? So let's see what they have to say about Millard Fillmore. Uh, you know, even he himself, when he got out of the White House, he wrote that the world had forgotten him. And it's like, yeah, how do you forget about a guy named Millard? Or Fillmore? I don't know, who names their child Millard? Anyway, times have changed. So, the number one thing they decided to tell us about was, hey, man, he grew up in extreme poverty. And yeah, we have had some presidents, you know, what you call the log cabin presidents, this guy's literally one of them, was born into a log cabin. And his father did not want him to be a farmer, a poor farmer like he was, so he apprenticed him out to a cloth dresser. That's a weird title. And apparently, it's in history, no one likes Millard Fillmore, apparently his cloth dresser didn't like him either because Millard Fillmore had to come home because he was so severely mistreated by this guy. Like severe uh, mistreatment and punishment. So after that he works to educate himself. I like this concept. You know you see this with some presidents. You see this with Lincoln. You see this with Jackson. You know you see this uh, with Booker T. Washington. You know former slave. Worked hard to educate himself. Frederick Douglass. You like that? Can admire that. He got admitted to the bar at the age of 23. Now this is one of the things I really don't like about Millard Fillmore because it turns out he was a lawyer. Now he was a really good lawyer and it's like, yeah, great, he was making a lot of money, but that law thing, it just seems to drag you into politics because you get around a lot of politicians for some reason. You're like, hey, why are all these politicians trying to get around these lawyers or vice versa? Go look at the list of our presidents and what they did before they were President of the United States of America. Most of them were lawyers. So he starts meeting these political figures and he's like, hey, you know, I can get involved in government and get all this stuff and get all these things done. And he's like, yeah, that's where this is going. The number two thing they had was he got his start as an anti Mason. Now, a lot of people don't know this. It's kind of odd because right above this, I saw one of my former students, you know, posting about the Masonic Lodge, and he's in the Masonic Lodge. And I will say I've had quite a few former students, like, contact me and, like, want to talk about the Freemasons and stuff. But in, like, in the 1820s, 1830s, this was actually a really powerful, influential group. Most of our early presidents were in the Masons. And apparently, Millard Fillmore jumped in on this uh, anti-Masonic party and that was really popular in New York because that was where the Masons had a lot of influence. I mean like people dying as a result of this kind of stuff like murders and things. So he gets involved there but then he starts thinking on a national scale. He's like I've got to get out of this and he goes and he joins the Whig party. So once he's off in the Whig party, you know, that's basically the people who hate Andrew Jackson party. That's what held them together. There were Northerners, there were Southerners, there were Westerners. Some of them were bankers, some of them were farmers, some of them were, you know, in industries and such. This thing they had in common was they did not seem to like Andrew Jackson. So that's what he's doing, and that's probably where the Millard Fillmore story should end. We should probably never hear about him. But Zachary Taylor goes out and he gets this guy to be his running mate, and it's like really unexpected. 
like no one saw this coming. Now my theory on it is maybe he just got him for name recognition. Literally. Not like, hey, I know that guy, but hey, what the heck is that guy's name? Millard Fillmore? Well, that's kind of cool. He's on there, you know, with Zachary Taylor, the big war hero. Yeah, let's vote for him. So that's my theory. It just looked unusual. You know, we've had a lot of those, like Hannibal Hamlin. Imagine that guy's name on there. Spiro Agnew. Listen to pattern, get you an oddly named vice president. Number three, says he was one of the accidental presidents. Yeah, how does a guy named Millard Fillmore get to be president of the United States? Hmm. Well, the Democrat Party had kind of split over the whole slavery issue. Talks about them winning with 47% of the vote. And of course, you got to get the majority and all of this stuff, but that kind of makes me want you know, what happened to that 50 plus 1% thing? I don't know. 47% though, this is back when it was more common to have a lot more candidates to choose from. But this article says they left him out of the decision making process. Now, you got to understand, early in the country's history, Vice President really didn't have a lot to do, but like they didn't even invite him to the meetings and stuff. And it's like, hey, are we going to invite Miller? <laughs> no, no, we're not inviting Miller. Who wants Miller there? So Miller was just like doing nothing, which of course is fine as long as the President of the United States stays alive. But one of the weird things about Zachary Taylor is, I mean, we know that Thomas Jefferson, John Adams died on the 4th of July, but Zachary Taylor actually got sick after going to a 4th of July Independence Day party. He came down with a stomach virus. And it literally says here, this is just so weird. They used to do stuff like this. I mean, we know how George Washington died. You know, they were trying to do the bloodletting thing. That's what they did to him. They gave him a mercury compound called Columel. You know, not to be confused with caramel, and they induced bleeding and blisters on this guy. Yikes! I mean, come on! And he doesn't get better and he dies, which means Millard Fillmore gets to be President of the United States. Oh yeah, Millard Fillmore. Gotta love that. Which means he was never elected to office, you know, never elected to be President of the United States, so he's up there with John Tyler, Andrew Johnson, Chester A. Arthur, and of course, everyone's favorite, Gerald Ford. Next, he did not have a vice president. This is kind of weird, but it used to be very common. We had a lot of presidents die. Fortunately, we've never had a president, and then the vice president die, and this was way before like the 25th Amendment. So when he became president, he didn't appoint a VP. Neither did Tyler, neither did Johnson, and neither did Arthur. Arthur. So, what does that mean? For th 38 years of this country's history, we actually did not have a vice president. That to me is kind of intriguing, but you know, since they weren't ever really doing anything back then, I guess that's understandable, but it makes me wonder what would have happened if he would have died. Because like I said, there was no 25th Amendment yet saying who takes over. I guess the House of Representatives would have probably gotten together and uh, decided who the new president was. That's my guess, but I don't really know. I mean, if someone does, then just uh, comments down below. Number five, he attempted to reduce tensions between the North and South. Yeah. You suck at that, Millard Fillmore. But then again, everyone did. I mean, this was just the one problem we could not take care of. This was the one issue we could not get past, was that whole North-South thing. Now, he did personally oppose slavery, but he did a lot of things to support slavery, to try and keep the country intact. So, he did not like the Compromise of 1850, but he supported it anyway because he thought, hey, this could save the country. And I will say, yeah, it did for about 10 years. I mean, it actually worked. People like to say, oh, it didn't work because of what happened later. But at the time it worked, and they even call this the so-called Compromise of 1850. Well, I mean, that's the name of it. It's like this guy's Millard, so we gotta call him Millard, right? Oh, I see what you did there. Let's play with semantics. So, he actually, enforced the whole thing with federal officers having to go and chase down slaves. Now he's going to fall into the exact same thing Stephen Douglas does here. You support the Southerners to try and keep them happy with you. 
you turn around and you upset the northerners and you get smoked in the election so he even said of the compromise of 1850 after it became law he said i trust that this will restore the harmony and peace to our distracted country well not totally you know with the whole bleeding kansas and john brown business and stuff like that Ooh, this one, number six. Fillmore once personally fought a fire in the Library of Congress. Now, I like this one. This one is probably my favorite one. The mental image of Millard Fillmore fighting a fire in the Library of Congress is fascinating to me. And it's said in there that his father only owned three books. It was like a hymn book, an almanac, and of course, the Bible. But Millard became a book fanatic. I love the word bibliophile. You know, they threw that in there. He was a bibliophile. Now, here's where it gets kind of dorky. It said that Millard Fillmore literally carried a dictionary around with him. You know, we know thanks to Webster, we got Webster's Dictionary. So he's carrying this thing around to improve his vocabulary. Yeah, I may improve your vocabulary, Millard, but I don't think that or your name is going to improve your chances with the ladies. But then again, who am I kidding? Millard Fillmore was actually married. That makes me feel kind of sad. But anyway, he's there, he's president, the fire breaks out, he goes down there and personally helps fight this thing. And then whenever all this stuff's destroyed, he actually signed a bill into law to replace all the books that had been destroyed. So, way to go, Millie. Millie, Millie. Number seven, he was never nominated for a second term. This is kind of sad. I mean, when you get in there and you're literally the president, now, granted, he wasn't elected himself, but they just decide to pass you on by. Just walk on by. They're like, no, Millard, we want you gone. I mean, I'm noticing a pattern here with Millard. They just wanted him gone. So they're like, no, no, no. Now, mainly, again, this may not have been totally because of his personality or something. It was because of his enforcement of the Fugitive Slave Law. That's what got him. It enraged Northern abolitionists. So the Southerners liked him and they supported him, but you know, the whole party's going to fall apart. Just like the Democrat Party's going to fall apart. And this is the beginning of the end for the Whig Party as well. They go and get Winfield Scott, old Fuss and Feathers, the uh, general. Now, I guess they just love, the Whigs just love sticking with these military guys. It's like, hey, it worked for Zachary. Let's see if we can get another old codger in there and he can die while he's president. That'll be fun. This is entertaining. So, Whig party. Now, number eight is something else that most people probably do not know. You ready? Woo! Fillmore lost badly in his own presidential election bid. Yeah, the Whigs tossed him out, so you know what he did? He goes and he joins the Know Nothing Party. Yeah, the Know Nothing Party. So, apparently Millard Fillmore just wanted to offend everybody. That's what he apparently was all about, because this was the anti-Catholic, anti-immigrant party, the Know Nothing Party, and he campaigned basically saying, well, he wrote that the way the politicians were pandering to the immigrant vote was destroying the country. But he didn't run very well because it said he actually left the country while he was supposed to be campaigning just to do whatever, I don't know. But he got smoked, he won only the state of Maryland, and got 22% of the popular vote. So here's the lesson of the day. If you try to please everyone, you're going to please no one. Apparently except Maryland and 22% of the people. So that's almost one out of four people, but you know. Come on, Maryland. You're the only state that actually voted the majority of your people for Millard Fillmore. Like, put that on your sign. Welcome to Maryland. We love Millard Fillmore. That can be your legacy, Maryland. You should totally claim that, because no one else can say it. Not even his home state of New York. Number nine, he disagreed with Abraham Lincoln's policies. Now this isn't so bad. A lot of people, a lot of people uh, disagreed with Abraham Lincoln's policies. And in fact, that was the video I was going to make tonight was about Abraham Lincoln. And is he actually as great as people, or is he even a tyrant? 
Because a lot of people even still today hate and despise Abraham Lincoln. Like we see him as the greatest president ever and we think everyone must have just loved him. But no. I mean, he wasn't on the ballot in 11 southern states. Uh, the South obviously hated him. His election led to the death of 625,000 Americans, and that's the conservative low number. Uh, so Abraham Lincoln, it's kind of an interesting thing. And remember, even in 1864, there was literally a very good chance this guy was not going to be reelected. So you can't really bash Millard for that, but apparently he hated the Republicans too. He bashed the Republican policies, he bashed uh, the radical Republican Reconstruction, he sided with Andrew Johnson. So Millard Fillmore was just like all over the place. Which means he might have been a little bit crazy or he might have changed his mind a lot. Or, 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 he might have actually been thinking for himself. Millard. Millard. So, number 10. History has not been kind to Millard Fillmore. Now apparently this just wasn't apparently as exciting as they thought it was going to be. They're just going to bash the guy at the end. You know, Millard Fillmore is one of those guys in history, it's safe to bash him. You can bash Millard. You can make fun of his name. You can make fun of his lack of accomplishments. You can make fun of the fact he was a continual loser. Because he never really was elected president, you know. So he lost a lot of elections. A bunch. So they're like, oh, history hasn't been kind to Millard Fillmore. So here's what they had to say. Fillmore's name always appears at the bottom of the list of the presidents. So if you list them by greatest, he's always down at the bottom. And they'll go all the way to the bottom like 44. You know, they'll throw Millard Fillmore there. there. Who was the other president? I don't know. Look at Ellis, Millard Fillmore. Stick him on the bottom. Because it's safe to put him on the bottom because not many people are going to defend him. Not many people know anything about him. I mean, I even have students when I say Millard Fillmore, they're like, who's that? And I kind of just say, well, he was a sorry president that no one really cares about. And then we go on. Ooh, let's talk about Lincoln. Yeah. Nothing like Millard Fillmore is ever going to show up on an end-of-the-year test or anything. The White House's official website refers to Millard Fillmore as uninspiring. And you know, the, the official White House website, you would think they're just trying to be as non-confrontational. It's not just as straightforward. This is bland, boring. This is what they did and who they were. Even they, you know, who would try not to offend someone, because it's the White House's website, you know, every president we have to kind of like try and make them look good. Nope. They call them uninspiring. And they ended with this. In 1988, a Yale history professor quipped that to discuss Millard Fillmore at all is to overrate him. Ouch! I mean, to come up with that, and then they see the quote, and they're like, hey, hey, yeah, that's great, let's stick it on the end to try and save this article. They're like, huh, yeah. To discuss him at all, like mentioning his name is overrating him. So that's what people think of Millard Fillmore. So the question is, was Millard Fillmore a loser? Was he a complete loser? I have to say, yes.